What's at play here? What's really at the root? This is a very common, complex, deeply rooted issue that human beings struggle with as number of vectors, angles, and I've been different factors come into play. It is, in its essence, it is simply a judgment that we make against ourselves. It is a voice of condemnation, accusation, a voice that shouts or whispers failure, unclean, uh, damned, a voice of self-loathing and so forth. Now, having said that, it's false. That's the, you might say, the overt door into us talking about the talking. But I would actually say that for us to understand clearly, we need to take a big step back and say, What's, what's, what is this issue fundamentally and Essentially, it's an issue of the conscience. The conscience, which is the New Testament word, and then the metaphor, in your eyes. You know, every man did what's right in his own eyes. It's according to his own evaluation. The conscience is this evaluative capacity that is wired into us. We are in God's image, and so we are wired to make judgments. And we are wired as human beings to make judgments of everything, of the weather, of the food we're eating, of God, of the events that are happening in our world, of other people, of ourselves. And when we're talking about self-hate, then it is anchored in something that has a, there's a creational underpinning in terms of that we are made to evaluate, but then we are fallen, our conscience is skewed. It goes self, self-hate seems to function as a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, it's, a, it's a prophetic voice, and we, every human being lives our prophets, if you will. We're always listening to a voice, and that voice can be one we self-generate, it can be one that other cultures messages, it can be the voice of God, and the true voice of God, it can be of various kinds of lives, from sociocultural, you know, peer pressure advertising, cultural images, or in the, in the case I just mentioned, a parent. So, yeah, there's a self, there are self-destructive cycles where what we believe hooks into directly to them, how we interpret life, how we interpret ourselves or events, it hooks directly to them what we do. It does seem to me that, that as we as we think about the immediacy of the struggle, the self-loathing, self-condemnation, you know, I'm so horrible, I don't do anything right, I'm just a disappointment, I'm a drain on everyone, I'm a loser. Those are all voices, and they're voices that they rob us, they rob a person of faith, they rob a person of joy, they rob us of love, they rob us of ability to be the center and be the people of others. There's a line out of what Zephyr and the The Lord is in your midst, and you shall never again fear evil. You know, the voices of, of faults. Falsity and lie and condemnation, your stupid and your eyes, your eyes blood, is evil. And so here's a, I'm in your midst. You're not alone. You don't ever need to fear evil. And mighty one who saves, you know, that touches the sense of powerlessness, the sense that nobody could really love me because I'm so, I'm so marred, I'm so dirty, I'm so shameful, I feel so badly. Here's the, here's the voice of the Lord Himself. You will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. And you think how within self-loathing, there's a very talkative inner world going on that's very unhappy. He'll quiet you with his love. He'll himself to 